Today, I'm going to be going through every single special effect in VTube Studio. VTube Studio is one of the most commonly used live 2D softwares for VTubers. Through the years, it's gotten dozens of new features, including a recent update, which added special effects. I went ahead and tried them all out so you can have a nice overview of everything there is to offer. If you want to start using these, you can double click, go to your cog menu, go to the camera sub menu, and scroll down to the VFX section. Here you can toggle on the activate button, and that's really it. It's that simple. Do note that you also have a mic intensity option option on some of these, and if you want to be able to use your mic, you'll have to go to the first menu and scroll down into the mic options section where you can toggle on the microphone and pick your input of choice. Before we get started, I did want to say that the effects sometimes interrupt item pinning, so just make sure you do any item pinning and item hotkeys beforehand. And this does affect your GPU performance depending on how many effects you're using and of course depending on which GPU you have, so just be mindful of your computer's performance. I will say that some of these effects also also change appearance depending on if you have a background, transparency, or if you're using spout pre-multiplied alpha. At the end, I'm going to include a little compilation that shows each of those options if that's something that you need to see before you make your choice on using VTube Studio or trying out the special effects. First things first, we have color grading, which is a way to change how the colors on your model and background will appear. If you're used to working with art programs, you'll recognize most of these sliders. There's a basic HSL slider, then you also have some custom color tints. White balance sliders are there too, so you can adjust warmth, coolness, and magenta and green tones. And at the bottom, there's actually a color in too. Just note that if you use this with spout pre-multiplied alpha, it will actually destroy the transparency. The weather effects are super simple. They're limited to just rain and snow. Although I guess what else would you have? Like hail? I don't know. These are both just on an intensity slider and you do have the ability to swap them in front of or behind your model. Bloom is that nice little glowy effect that you see in video games that makes things look pretty like a sunset. For both types of bloom, the higher the threshold, the harder it is for it to take place and the intensity controls the amount of bloom. You can also adjust the amount that your model darkens against that glow, and you can customize the color for both of these. There's actually an option to swap the light shriek bloom to be vertical if you so desire, and for both of these, you can also use your mic input to control the intensity. Wah. Yeah. Quality here seems to make the blurred aspect of the bloom more or less accurate. It might use more GPU power or something like that. Not really sure. In terms of what things are actually affected by the bloom, I'm pretty sure it's anything that has an additive layer. As you can see here, I have a tablet and a little TTS pet, both of which are additive layers, and those seem to get really glowy when I toggle this on. My eyes also get glowy, but those don't have additive layers, so I'm pretty sure VTube Studio might just pick up the eyes or use like the art mesh names to be able to tag them. But that's just an assumption. I'm not really sure how it works. So it's up to you to figure it out. The backlight option lets you overlay a color of choice on the outer rim of your model. The angle and intensity are completely adjustable. Although the only way for you to use input as the color of the lighting is to use your background for the light color, which means that if you want true screen color, like from your gameplay input or an overlay in OBS, you do have to use something like spout background for OBS in order to capture that. I do have a video on how to set up spout background. So if you're curious, there's probably a link there and down in the description. Now within the same tab, if you scroll far enough, there is actually a stroke option as well. And this has a neat little stripe animation. If you want, you can turn off the animation, but you also have the option to make it wavy and change the thickness. And if you scroll even further down, there is a third option, which is a drop shadow. And this has adjustable placement and color options. Custom particles are for some reason set to max maximum and they're like all turned on when you first turn it on. So I'm just going to toggle these all off real fast so we can go through them individually. Anytime that you make an adjustment here, you do have to wait for like a moment for it to take effect. It's not instant, so just give it time to update. I'm gonna go back through these and set them all to maximum and minimum size and amount so you can kind of get a gauge for the range on these. There's also space at the bottom for two custom particles, both of which have the option to be additive, which makes them glowy, or have color overlays. These also have rotation options and there's even a microphone input for intensity option as well. Just note that if you want to do custom particles, you do have to put those PNGs into your items folder within VTube Studio. Background and foreground shift pretty much function the same. One of them is going to affect whichever background you have set within VTube Studio, while foreground shift lets you affect an image overlay that takes effect on top of your model. These have the option to move with your tracking randomly or as a combination of the two. Foreground shift does have a color tint option for the overlay as well. 
and background shift actually does come with some additional blur options. Up next is the vignette effect, which is color customizable. It also allows you to center the effect wherever, adjust its roughness, and swap between round and rectangular options. When you toggle this on, it does have a nice little fade-in effect as well, which is pretty neat. Chromatic aberration hardly needs an explanation, as it's really just an on and off switch, but you do also have this option to blur the edges of the effect. Ooh. If you want a less intense effect, you can basically just use the effects on slash off slider as an intensity option. Custom particle shower lets you pick three images for particle rain, and each of those has its own custom speed slider, and also the ability to move the particles in front of or behind your model. If you want to use custom particles, these are going to be in the same place as the other custom particles. Analog glitch lets you have a few different types of glitch effects, including scan lines, vertical jump, color drift, and horizontal shaking. All of the glitch effects are really intense, in my opinion. Even even at low values, so just know you can type a value up to like the third or fourth decimal place if you want something more subtle and are having a hard time with the sliders. Digital glitch adds a particle-like glitch effect as a screen overlay. I think this one also has very simple sliders as well. Cinematic letterbox lets you frame your model and background like you're in a movie, and the color and positions on this are both completely customizable. You can also add this zoom option, and when you use this, it does have, like the vignette, a nice little fade-in animation. Now the foggy window effect is a really unique effect because it does have this additional level of interactivity, and if you right click on your screen, anywhere that you wipe will be defogged, like you're actually wiping the screen. You can toggle the wiped fog to return or not with this button at the bottom here, and everything else is purely cosmetic in terms of the amount, the speed, and the color of the fog and the raindrops. The speed line effect is yet another simple one. Basically, you can just control the intensity with the on or off slider, and then you have two color options, and you can even change the center of this if you want. The pixel effect basically lets you turn off your RTX button and you can adjust the amount and actually use a color filter to change how the colors on your model look. So you could do something like a simulated Game Boy recolor. It's pretty cool. All right, let's get into the funny ones though. Lens distortion is actually hilarious. It reminds me of like using photo booth in 2005 on my mom's computer. It lends you bend your model around a faux lens and make man-made horrors beyond comprehension. The only downside is that you can't move the lens, so if you're like me and usually stream in the bottom right or left side of your VTube studio, you might not be able to take full advantage of this one. But wave distortion, on the other hand, affects every part of the screen and has multiple different types of waves, including a droplet and a heat wave option. The main wave toggle has an option for the strength, which is like the intensity, frequency, which is the amount of waves, and scroll, which is effectively the speed. Blur is another simple one, and this one comes with a pixelation and classic blur option. And it's also got a motion blur, which uses your model movement as input and can start to hurt your brain if you look at it for too long. TV static grain adds an animated noise effect to your model and it's got size and color options. Well, the color option is really just on or off, but do be careful with this because if you stream and don't have a high quality stream or a high bit rate, then you might end up with really crunchy video. So just be mindful of that. The VHS effect is really cool, but note that it does ruin your transparency which means that you will have to use this with some type of background or use spout background. There's a lot of different options in here, but just note that the after image affects the model's movement slash distortion. So if you want the after image to be visible, you will have to mess with all of these other settings and then change the color. Edge detection will find edges on your model and allow you to recolor them. You can adjust the sensitivity and it's really niche, but I guess it's really cool because it lets you outline your model like a Jojo color inversion or something. I don't know the use for that, but hey, it's pretty cool, right? Posterize is one slider. It's posterize or not, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> and finally, the ASCII text effect lets you use your model as a mask for ASCII text, which is recolorable to make it look like you're a hacker or something. It's worth noting that you can combine all of these and make really neat effects, but just be mindful of how it's affecting your GPU performance and your transparent capture in OBS. Now, before I go through and play that little compilation of all of the spout transparency, spout pre-multiplied alpha transparency, and with a background options, I do want to give you a quick uh, shameless plug and let you know that I do stream on Twitch and you can support me there or on my coffee page or on my Redbubble page, buy my stickers. Anyway, let's go through all of these.
And that's it for all of the effects in VTube Studio. If you're still here, hopefully that gives you a good overview of all of the new VFX features and can help you implement them in your own streams or decide to go forward with VTube Studio if you are curious about it. Make sure to take care of yourselves and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.